AOV packs two monster builds. The build you're about to see here on screen, it's all Raiden, Thunder God, Thor Destruction from the Heavens, right? It's an insane speed build. Um, they added the Norvald's Fervor set this season, so you're getting 400% damage instead of the 100, and it absolutely just eats demons alive, fries their little brains for breakfast. Just hop on the pony, one horsepower is all you'll need for this build. This is the Crusader AOV speed build with Fist of Heavens, and the Crusader AOV push build with Heaven's Fury. Now this is for season 22, patch 2610, and uh, yeah, Diablo 3, blah, 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 blah. This build is crazy fast. It's consistently getting under two minute runs on T16 and up to GR90 or so. Um, you can speed this even past 100, um, but obviously the time slows down, you know, as the enemies get more health and so forth. But what you see is what you get. This build's a beast. Norvald's Fervor really turns a lot of the Crusader builds into absolute monsters. You can keep up with all the god DHs out there, you know, the multi-shot demon hunters, all the speed builds that are out there, you basically can keep up with everyone. Uh, besides channeling Monk, that's that's a whole different, that's like the Flash superhero, that's a whole different situation. I'd say this is just great for anybody who missed AOV in the past. Um, this is a new set that they added in the, in the last year or so to Diablo, and it's great all around. You can play it a multitude of ways, and we're gonna get into that in this video today. So, like, what's New Blood, hey? What's the 411? Why are we talking about this build has already been out, this and that? Well, the main culprit of why we're talking about it is the Flail of Charge and the Shield of the Steed, right? They buffed it from, like we said, from 100 to 400% damage. So to utilize this buff, you get 400% you get increased damage for five seconds when it ends. So there's a little, there's a little icon here, right? You're on the pony, and then as soon as you jump off and you start attacking, you get this steed charge for, for five seconds, which is plenty of time to kill enemies, especially for speed runs, right? Um, you're gonna get familiar with this. The best build in the game, Akon Bomb Thorns uses it. AOV uses it, the speed build uses it. You can use it in rolling. You literally, it's just a flat damage increase. You can use this with anything in the game because it's just a flat 400% across the board. This is also the Hadrick's Gift for season 22, so you guys get this for free, part of your set. Um, I did a like a best start video, and this was my award for best all around set, because the two, four, and six piece give you like amazing bonuses, and it's a more natural progression than just getting a crazy spike. I mean, you do get a spike, but it's it feels good. Every time you get a Hadrick, you know, it feels awesome. We're gonna cover the builds and the gameplay and all that later in the video. But I just wanna let you know like what's new, why should you play this, right? And then number one would be the Norvalds that we talked about. And for the push build, um, because you have the fourth slot in the cube, you can actually wear the Traveler's Pledge, the Endless Walk Set. So think about how strong AV is. It's about an S tier build, not even counting the seasonal theme. And on top of that, with like not even counting the Shadow Clones, not even counting Season 22, it's an S tier build. Now you get the Endless Walk set on top of it. Man, this hits like a truck. And I'll show you footage that we got on stream later on in the video, like I was saying. And there is other combos. You can mix in and in the fourth slot, you can rock the Ivory Tower instead of Endless Walk. There's a lot of things to play with and let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments below. It's always fun to kind of theory craft with the community and everything like that. Before we get into the next section, if you could please leave a like on the video, I'd really appreciate it, it helps me out a ton as these videos take a lot of time to produce. Also, there'll be chapters um, in the timeline and timestamps in the description for sure. All right, Blood, so what can this build accomplish? You know, you are gonna start with this with Hadrig. What can you accomplish with this? With 800 Paragon, you know, you can see the parameters down here. Less than 10K main stat, 100 gems. Um, we absolutely decimated a 110. And again, I'm gonna show you the footage later. I just wanna let you know what to expect absolutely obliteration like not even worried whatsoever just you know whopped to the first map that we walked into um so you're looking at like a 110 to 125 range for like new player or like early progression um, when you get to a mastery level and you get lots of augments lots of power i mean you're looking at a 150 clear um, for next season for season 22 you know people have cleared 150 with it already in previous seasons with the seasonal themes and the fourth slot, I feel like AOV will be up there. The only problem is there is, everyone's gonna be playing a con bomb, thorns, right? 
So you're going to see the leaderboard full of thorns. It's not like AOV's weak. It's just, you know, people want to play the hotness. People want to play what's popping. So that's the reasoning. But if you're not into thorns and you want to play Seder or you never played this build before, this would be a good time to do so. One reason why I'm doing this video first is it has a extremely, it's like a 0% chance it's going to get nerfed. Whereas a con is still up in the air. I'm waiting for those final patch notes from Blizzard. Also, um, for your build power, this is the group RGK. And another thing you can do, if you don't know about the four player leaderboard, you can actually rock that Norvald fervor set we were talking about. Now I did try to push with this for solo and it's super hard to play because with pig sticker, you're attacking so fast, your cooldown is coming up a lot faster to keep up Akrat's champion. Um, so man, this is very challenging to play this type of build. Now, if you're in a group setting, you don't have to worry about losing stone gauntlets because Barb is giving you ignore pain. So that's really the thing is if you're in a group, use this combo, something similar to this. It's really powerful. It's just, you know, when you're so low, it's really hard to maintain your CDR and keep up. But this, we one tapped an elite on 110 with this combo. It's just so hard to play. So I'm gonna stick with my current version of the build using Endless Walk. But if you're in a group setting, I mean, this is the group RGK by far. This is so good, right? You can see all the power you get from it that you wouldn't have had previously. And in the four slot, they obviously have the, you know, Heaven's Fury shield. That's cool blood, but you know, how do I play the build? All right, so we're gonna talk about the speed version. You literally just keep your buffs up, ride around on your pony, right? And then whenever you see an elite, you just DPS. And by the time you kill it after one tap, you should have your cooldown back, right? Like this, you pop it and repeat. Just fist to heavens and go, really simple. For the push build, I like over 60% cooldown, which sounds out of control, but since we have the captain set, it's not that hard to do. A white gem in the helm. You can get by with like 55 and higher, but I like just 60 plus. I feel like you guys won't struggle too much. Just pretty much put it everywhere. It's not that big a deal. I don't even have it on my weapon. To, to put it in perspective, it's not even on the weapon, right? And this is the one we did the um, 110 with, right? The rotation for AOV Heaven's Fury is to attack the elite with Fist of Heavens. You need three stacks on the elite. And it's really easy to maintain the three stacks. They last a long time and they're giving you your resource back. So sometimes you need to make like a triangle like I showed you around the elite to it kind of zaps them. Otherwise you don't get your resource back, but it's only on rare occasions with like floating Rift Guardians and things like that, just to be aware of it. Before you DPS, like after you have your thing up, you're going to hit them with Shield Glare and then you're just gonna hold down Heaven's Fury, right? That's all you do is hold it down. And you, if anything, you wanna focus on Holy Cycle because that's when you're gonna do the most damage. But pretty much you're gonna be DPSing the whole time. You get a lot of resource with the build and with Captain going, you have a lot of reduced resource costs. You'll have tons of reduced resource costs, not only because the Captain set gives you 20, but because the Shield Unstoppable Force gives you 50%. So you really don't have to worry about your reduced resource costs because you get a ton from your Law and then it's so all you got to do is stack cooldown and you're good to go. We are using stone gauntlets in the build because they're absolutely amazing for damage reduction. When you're in transition, just make sure to throw out um, a fist of heavens every, a heavens fury every once in a while, right? You're just walking by and you're like, hey, Kadala, take this. Hey, you bald dude, take this. Hey, Tyrael, take that, right? So as you're just walking by, just throw out taps while keeping up your three stack like this, right? So that's it. Just blinding flash. Heaven's Fury, and that's that's pretty much it. Obviously, you would keep up Iron Skin when you can and Akarat's Champion when you can. Um, it's a lot simpler to play these days. They changed some things about it in the past, but we don't have to get into that now. That's just pretty much exactly how you play it. This is me progressing on my Heaven's Fury push build. Um, so you can see in the bottom down here, I'm watching my live stream since that's where I got all the footage from. You can see the three stack right here. And we're just looking for positioning to get in and sneak in with Fist of Heavens. You can see that, look at the elite just getting shreked, right? Again, 800 Paragon, all that stuff, um, less than 100 gem levels, you know? So it's really hard for me to stand still to take advantage of my endless walk set in this scenario, but I'm just kind of finding my spot, running around, looking for, you know, Oculus ring procs, and just taking my time. I know I hit super hard, so I'm just kind of getting my shots in where I can and uh, doing my DPS. You can see we're already pulling ahead. So even with like arcane beams and bad maps, you shouldn't have any issues. You can see me slow down right there with, with uh, Stone Gauntlet. So make sure you number lock Akrat's Champion or just get in the habit of using it more often. So as I'm progressing here, I'm just, like I said, tapping Fist of Heavens and tapping Heaven's Fury. 
Um, I came across a shield elite here. And one thing to note when you're DPSing, let me pause it. The elites right here. Okay. So pardon my art. I'm a scary elite. Rawr. And like you have these big three heavens fury blasts, right? So if you're too far back, you're only hitting with one here, one here and one here. That's not good. You want to be like right up on him so you can hit him with all three directly. I believe the first one is what procs the AD and everything like that. The middle one that procs the AD and everything. But you just want to be right up on them so they can get all three blasts and take the maximum damage. So I dispatch that elite. I come up on another yellow here. I'm hitting him with three stacks of Fist of Heavens, staying up on him and casting um, Heaven's Fury. And we're about to hit Holy Cycle. We're in fire. And he's, I mean, he's just getting destroyed, right? Holy Cycle is just hitting him for an insane amount of DPS. And as we're standing still, we're getting our Endless Walk Set buff. And progressing through the rift, you know, make sure you hit him with that um, Shield Glare because that's what procs, I think, your Bracers, right? So definitely keep that in mind. I mean, this build just absolutely slaps, right? We're not even using a power or a Condi or anything like that. So we'll do one more example here. Fist of Heavens. You know, keep up your cooldowns, stay right up on him. And our resource is good too, right? Like I was saying, like because of the captain set, because of our law, um, and because we're getting resource back from Fist of Heavens, it's funneling all that into Heaven's Fury. It's just nonstop attacking, where it's um, really kind of an action packed build. And it's one of my favorites. I did a 140 on this. Um, a few seasons ago and had a good time with it. You can find this build and like hundreds of other builds on my website, bloodshed.com. Links will be in the description. And you can see in the S tier, I have Heaven's Fury and Akon Thorns, uh, both of which I'll put the video link next to them once they're produced. I might change my stance on a few things. So always check back for the latest and greatest, right? You just click on what you need and the build should pop up right there. So I need to update it for 2.6.10 now that I decided on Endless Walk Set over. I wasn't sure if I was going to go um, Ivory Tower or something or just go Norvald Set. So I finally decided I'm just going to stick with Endless Walk as it's really easy to play and powerful as well. It just kind of doubles down on what the set's good with. Before we move on to the next section, just remember if you get a floaty type Rift Guardian, Vesalius, Ember, it can be tricky. It's like a weird glitch that you have to cast like this trifecta because as they're moving around, they're getting hit by your Heaven's Fury. If you just spam it all in one area, you're not going to have any resource and you're going to be hating life. And then without the resource, you can't attack with Heaven's Fury. And if you can't attack with Heaven's Fury, your stone gauntlets are going to not work and you're just going to be getting murdered. So on hardcore, if I get a floaty Rift Guardian, I'd consider leaving or saving iron skin in case you mess up the thing. And then you can always iron skin and get out, get out of dodge, right? It's kind of a hardcore friendly build, but you have to manage your cooldowns and your tanky. As soon as your stone gauntlets affect you, you're dead. So maybe that would be a thing to pay attention to. I'll just talk about gear and stats. Um, in the gear and stats section, I'm going to show you in case the website's down. Sometimes early season, the website can be down. So this is the AOV god build right here and i'm just going to quickly hover over it these stat priorities aren't perfect this is just what i got on the ptr so remember to check the build guide for the latest and greatest you can always pause the video you guys know what these are okay and then for the speed build actually it's test t16 but it's the gr and the speed build in one and i have furnace because of the i mean just the burst like i just want to one tap these elites and move on with my life. But you could use almost anything here like Messerschmitt for cooldown or whatever your heart desires. You can use a lot of stuff in this in this spot right here. A lot of questions might be blood why pig sticker. It just has crazy, it's a crazy stat stick. You can get like five stats on it and it has that daggers have the fastest attack speed possible and you want to get that 7% attack speed which I didn't roll here because um, you're trying to get out as many attacks during your COE cycle as possible. That far outweighs like almost anything else you could even put there. It's just you don't sleep on the pig sticker. It's insane. And then here's the number one four man crusader on the leaderboard. If you need some ideas on the from the PTR um, in the fourth slot, he had this shield, right? The Heaven's Fury shield. Don't forget that. And remember, this is better for groups because they're giving you ignore pain. Just make sure your barb keeps up ignore pain or the monk drops the, um, you know, crowd control immunity sanctuary thing, whatever it's called. 
Um, as far as the final thoughts go, if you've never played this, I think you'll have a good time with it, as long as the push build looks fun to you. Now you can push with Heaven's with. Now you can push with Fist of Heaven specifically. It's about a tier and a half weaker than Heaven's Fury, right? Heaven's Fury is the three, and then Fist of Heaven's is this, the Thor, Raiden, Lightning. There is, I do have a push build with that, and I'm gonna update it before the season's over, so on the site. It is, if you just like doing that, you can do that and be successful. You're probably looking at a 130 top end build. Um, for casual, like, you know, a thousand Paragon, you could probably do like a 120 with the seasonal theme. And then the top end, I'm only saying around 130 because I haven't tested it. I think people would like it, love the speed build. You can use the speed build even if you're using a Con Thorns for pushing or whatever build you want to use for pushing. You can go back and use Fist of Heavens. It's like super fun. Like it's in terms of fun, it's probably like S tier for me. And um, the push build is S tier fun for me as well. Like I said, I did a 140 uh, 40 solo in the season and could have went higher, And but I play so many builds. I put every single class on the leaderboard every season I try to. And so I'm usually busy. I'm like, okay, I'm good with this. I'm moving on to the next class. The only thing that I know triggers people is when they use stone gauntlets. If you want, you can try to get by and use like a unity in the slot or something else, right? You can try to drop stonies and add something else with the four slot and make yourself tanky that way. I guess that's an, uh, that's an option. We have an amazing community on Discord, on Twitch. What's up, Twitch guys? Um, you know, everywhere. So check the links in the description for everything like that. If you want to support further, you can go on Patreon or sub on Twitch. I always appreciate any kind of subs, likes the video, share the video, all that kind of good stuff. So that's gonna be all for me today. I have a lot of builds to get through and showcase. I'm out of here. Peace.